This is Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz on the Central Coast, and we are joined by Dan Carpenter. He is the Vice Mayor of the City of San Luis Obispo, also a candidate for the Board of Supervisors of San Luis Obispo County. That election will be held in June 2016. There's lots of issues to discuss. Let's talk about your decision to run for the Board of Supervisors in this great county. Your city's about 45,000. The county's about 300,000. Why have you decided to make that jump? Well, Brad, I've enjoyed my time on the city council. Uh, I, I'm in my sixth and final year of my term. Uh, while I could run for another term, I, I feel like, um, you know, my history, my mm -hmm. experiences can be better served in District 3 of the county. That's where my family has uh, been residents for 150 years. Is that true? Yes, a long time. And if I may, I just want to digress. Yes. From where did they come? Well, I, I'm half English, half Portuguese. Okay. So I, Portu I, For those that don't know, this county is heavily populated by Portuguese immigrants. Madonnas. It is. It the is. Madonna. Are you a Madonna? No, I'm not. Okay, the Madonna <laughs> Inn, the iconic Madonna Inn, they are from... Wait, are they even Portuguese? I feel I, like they're Swiss. They're Swiss, I believe. Oh, but they were they were dairy farmers alongside the right. Portuguese in the Edna Valley. Right. And so the Swiss Swiss Portuguese were right. very close uh, in the Edna Valley, and that's where my uh, Portuguese ancestors arrived was uh, in Edna and Avila. And what were they growing? No, they were dairy farmers. Dairy. Dairy farmers, and then my. Um, Carpenter side of the family, right. uh, where my grandmother was a squire, and if you're familiar with that area, Squire Canyon is just across from Avila, and they settled that area in the late 1800s. And so I have the English connection. They were ranchers, entrepreneurs, elected officials, and then my uh, Portuguese dairy farming. So both sides of my family are native to this so district. you have elected officials in your family tree? I do, absolutely. A mm -hmm. recent one, um, my uncle, Lyle Carpenter, uh -huh. was a fourth district supervisor. He lived in Aurora Grande in the uh, mid to late 60s. Okay, anyone before that? Um, there were, I don't recall exactly who or what they served. I wonder what your ancestors would think well, uh, about their great, great grandson, whatever it may be. He's already on the city council. He's running for county supervisor. There's a nephew that was, you know, already it's, a county supervisor. It's in our blood, I think. Yeah. We we are leaders, and I don't say that in an arrogant way. I understand. I, I think um, my family has been in that position in this community as, as leaders in different types of things, business leaders. Why? And what is it about your DNA? I, I think the commitment to the community. I, uh -huh. I mean, I look around and I see um, that that my family's been stewards of this community, uh, buildings and farmland, and, and I think the commitment is what draws you to leadership, is that I, I'm attached, my roots are very deep in this community, and, and that draws me to leadership. And I've, uh, you know, when people see that you have those type of roots, right. Uh, they tend to gravitate towards you and have high expectations, and so we, we step up and meet them. And so let's talk about the challenges this community faces. This community, like every county in the state, is facing a dramatic drought, an historic drought, a four-year drought. But yet now Mother Nature is playing tricks on us, and she's giving us a lot of rain. Probably not enough to make up for the drought. Uh, but that being said, how are you working both as a city council member and now looking towards the county to try to pull this county through the drought and through the potential challenges of El Nino. We, we do, and, and fortunately we're seeing, uh, or we're expecting some, some rain, rain events that right. will help at least um, mitigate some of the, the four-year drought this <laughs> hey, year. Man, we're we're hoping it will. Right. In the city of San Luis, uh, as you may know, we rely on surface water. Right. We have uh, Nacimento Lake, we have uh, Salinas, and we also have whale rock. And so mm. most all of our water comes from surface. We do have backup with recycled and we do have some uh, groundwater. However, the county's a little different. As you know, we, we have, I think, uh, 21 or 22 basins right. that primarily uh, serve to uh, most of the, the non-incorporated areas. Um, Lopez Dam, which right. was the last yeah. surface uh, reservoir dam that we built, was uh, completed about 1970, actually when my uncle was supervisor. I love it. And we have not built any, any surface storage since. So I think it's a combination of recharging our groundwater basins with maybe some of our recycled water. That's right. what we okay. see Pismo Beach doing that. We are looking into it, the city of San Luis. I think the other communities are going to be looking at recycled water, that tertiary treated water right. that comes from our, our wastewater plants. How can we send that back into our basins and what recharge them? What about desalination? And I ask you about that because as you know, in Cam Cambria, 
they have a kind of a hybrid desal plant. Right. Our friends in San uh, Santa Barbara are looking to bring back a desal yep. plant online. Our friends in San Diego have that amazing yes. Poseidon Carlsbad plant. Yep. You know, maybe Diablo Canyon in your potential district. Absolutely, they have desal going, but only for themselves. Yes. And that, that is an opportunity mm. that PG&E has approached the county right. with. I think it's a great opportunity. Um, anytime the county can add another resource to water, and this one is sustainable, of course, right. if, if we can pick up that extra uh, acre feet that would come mm -hmm. from there. I think it's important too, Brad, to remember that we have other sources of water in the county and we should be maximizing the use out of those before we um, you know, focus strictly on desal, but I think desal is one more additional tool in the toolbox and that's to help question. us sustain it. And that's the question is how do you get, obtain a portfolio of water sources right. so that you're not overly reliant on groundwater, on recycled water, on desal. And is that your hope and dream should you join the county? It is. Diversity, I think, in our water sources is important because we know in this state, we, we do, we're fortunate to have the high mountain range. We do right. normally have snowpack and we get water. Normally, <laughs> normally we do. Right. So we do have opportunities for surface storage. We obviously have some s large basins in our county. In fact, uh, the Paso Robles Basin is one of the largest on the West Coast. Yes, but we know the Paso Robles right. Basin is facing tremendous challenges. It is. At least in parts of it. That yes. is not in your district. It probably makes you happy it's not in your it district. It is, but it's a decision as a course, supervisor a super I would be making. Right. So there's the ground water recycled seems to be something that uh, we the technology continues to improve to the to the level where we can have it as drinking water uh, very soon and I think we're going to see that recharging those basins recharging our mm -hmm. surface wells and so uh, there's lots of opportunities on the horizon I would like to keep that diverse in how we bring water to our customers surface groundwater recycled all of them are important. You don't want to rely on one. So desal is another tool in the right. toolbox. I think it's great that we're moving in that direction, and um, I hope to see some benefits from it. Another challenge facing this county and the entire state is the homeless crisis. San Luis Obispo, yeah, it, it's hard to really know what the numbers are. There was a count recently. Some folks felt the count was very positive. We saw a drop of 31% for the overall population, 45% for the homeless veterans population. Some are questioning it. But aside from whether the, the count is, is legit, statewide, there's a homeless crisis. LA County has the largest population yeah. of homeless. The state has the largest population of homeless. Uh, talk to me about what you think the county and the city can do on that front. Well, we are addressing it as best we can. As the, with the city, uh, we made a sizable donation to the uh, temporary shelter that's being right. built on Prado Road, which will help alleviate that. I think the, the other part of, of that is that we need to, as city leaders, mm -hmm. and, and commit to the type of housing that will actually move people from uh, temporary shelter into actually housing where we can bring them the services. Wraparound services. Wraparound services. Mm -hmm. but, but we as a city, you know, people always ask me, what can you do, Dan? We can create policies that incentivize our builders to build the type of housing mm. that is truly affordable for those who are in the lower income level. So we do have opportunities. Right. So we know the California Supreme Court in a San Jose case recently allowed you yes. to have that power to incentivize affordable housing projects. Query, how quickly can those get online? I spoke with Mayor Marks recently and she's looking and trying to push that forward. I'm sure you're part of yes. that as well. I want to thank you again for joining us. He yeah. is a member of the uh, San Luis Obispo City Council. He's the vice mayor. He's also a candidate for the Board of Supervisors in San Luis Obispo County. And my name is Brad Pomerantz and this is Charter Local Edition.